In this video, I'm gonna show you five JavaScript books I regret not reading as a code newbie. I have no idea who Real Tough Candy is. She hired me because she thought adding a British presenter would give her more street cred. What's up, devs? We are sitting pretty outside today, El Fresco, on this beautiful September day, checking out some JavaScript books and why I regret not having them as a code newbie. Let's just get right into it. JavaScript and jQuery by John Duckett. I almost want to call it a classic, but it's not quite old enough to be called a classic or even a modern classic. It's still, I think it needs another year or two to reach that status, but it's a darn freaking good book. I know a lot of people have this one. It wasn't until later when I actually took the plunge and bought it and so many concepts in here for newbies. The organization and the layout are what make this book stand out above the others, in my opinion. Um, nicely organized, great code snippets, the photos, the choice of colors too, just really nice, almost artistic organization here and layout. The technical information is on point and I know what some people are probably thinking, come on, jQuery in 2019, jQuery in 2020, hear me out, jQuery is still really important to learn because of lo a lot of code bases uh, in the enterprise and real world projects do use jQuery. Something for everyone, something for every front end web developer, full stack developer. And if you're a back end dev too, and you're trying to just know a little bit about front end development, I think this is a good candidate as well. Makes your brain hurt a little, but it's definitely not academic. And it was one of the few books I've seen that is truly newbie friendly. JavaScript and jQuery again by John Duckett who is coming out with a PHP book soon. I cannot freaking wait. Number four. Eloquent JavaScript. I featured this one a couple weeks ago. Third edition. This is the most recent edition. This is on No Starch Press. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because I will link to that video where I do go into all this stuff. No sense in re repeating myself. But some of the things that do make this book stand out are the projects and the tests. I guess maybe quizzes or check your knowledge sections at the end of the chapters. He also goes into stuff like Node. This is another pretty long book too. 430 some pages. Pages, nice index there, uh, good code snippets. This is more of an advanced book though. This is definitely, I wouldn't say it's newbie friendly. I would say newbie plus. Number three, the You Don't Know JavaScript series by Kyle Simpson. The You Don't Know JavaScript series includes up and going, scope and closures, this and object prototypes, types and grammar, async and performance, and ES6 and beyond. So the one thing you may notice right away is that this is a very short book. This is what, 70 some pages, 70 ish, plus credits and stuff, and plus the introduction. Very slim book. So when I first got this, I'm like, okay, yeah, I see where this is going. Total cash grab, $9.99 a clip, and there's a whole series of them. But actually, don't let the shortage of pages fool you. The way he describes these things and the way he takes it and puts it into manageable chunks is a big selling point of this book and of the series. So whereas something like this can get overwhelming very quickly, you can just grab this book and say, okay, I'm gonna get up and going with JavaScript. What are the basic things that make JavaScript JavaScript? Comparing values, built-in type methods, what are functions even, loops, how do they work, conditionals. If you're totally new to JavaScript, this would be the first one you'd wanna pick up. And then he goes into the other things too, like ES6. So obviously this one I have on paperback. The others I do have as PDFs. Um, but I'm hoping to get the other ones on paperback because I do like a good paperback JavaScript book. Again, that's the You Don't Know JavaScript series by Kyle Simpson. You may have seen him on YouTube or somewhere else. He is a legit JavaScript guru. Number two, If Hemingway Wrote JavaScript by Angus Kroll. This is probably the most creative and offbeat JavaScript book I've ever seen. And the concept is that all of these literary grades were tasked with writing JavaScript. What would happen if all these people wrote JavaScript? Like Hemingway, Virginia Woolf, and there's really cool illustrations for each author. Jack Kerouac, really, really fun way of exploring JavaScript. If you don't know who these authors are, it's probably gonna take out a lot of the fun of this book, um, but you can still see some of the syntax and the author explains, you know, James Joyce would probably write it this way because he's so blah, blah, blah. So this is an example of Lewis Carroll if he wrote JavaScript 
and down the rabbit hole, of course, an Alice in Wonderland reference. Just a really fun and different way of looking at this language. No Starch is probably my favorite publishing company when it comes to tech publishing. They're not capable of putting out a bad book. Again, if you're not into books or like classic literature, this is probably going to be a little lame, but at the very minimum, you can see different ways of writing JavaScript. If Hemingway wrote JavaScript, Angus Kroll, that again is on No Starch Press. And number one, JavaScript, the good parts by the one and only Douglas Crockford. What I like about this book is that Douglas Crockford is not afraid to admit that JavaScript has some pretty bad parts. However, in this book, he strips away those bad parts and he shows you the good parts and how you can use those good parts to your advantage as a developer and as a problem solver. This book is pretty old. I might even say antique when we're talking about web development. This is from 2008. However, because it is based on JavaScript theory, this is the core of JavaScript and what makes JavaScript JavaScript. So it doesn't change. The core will never change. And that is what makes this book powerful because it is timeless. JavaScript will always have literals. JavaScript will always have expressions. And the way he explains these things, he's a very good writer and he's kind of old school. Um, definitely not a hipster and not gonna waste your time with like cute cat photos or anything like that. Lots of flowcharts and lots of code snippets just exposing the good parts of JavaScript and kind of a, a mind opener if you've been frustrated by JavaScript and just like, oh, this, this language sucks. No doubt JavaScript's a really frustrating language. It was never meant to be the primary language of the web. It kind of inherited the web after Java applets failed. It was next to inherit uh, the key to the kingdom. So now we are, we are stuck with it. So this makes our journey just a little bit easier. JavaScript, the good parts, Yahoo Press, Douglas Crockford revealing uh, the age of this book was still a pretty good one. There are lots more books that I have on JavaScript, but these are the, the top five I think I would have benefited from if I had them earlier on in my career. If you're new to all of these and you're new to web development, I would say start with JavaScript and jQuery and then maybe the Kyle Simpson series with Up and Going. Okay, planes, trains, and automobiles, that's my signal to get the heck out of here. They're coming for me, guys. They're coming for me. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.